Good Thursday afternoon, everybody. Oh, what a beautiful day to be outside. Listen real close there, you'll hear some sounds of spring. Didn't see no deer when I come in this time. But it's rained enough that I've got running water on the property. It'll be there for a little while. A little tag video to do today. Not sure where I'm going to do it. Let's just wander around for a little bit and see where I wind up. Thanks for coming, everybody. I found a nice little spot to sit down and have a chat for a few minutes. I don't come back up here and camp because I'm just about twice as far as I usually come when I'm at the hideout, which is right back that way. About halfway to the hole, maybe a little more than halfway to the hole I walk to, which I'll be doing again here before long before everything around here turns green. It's already greening up a little bit. You guys heard on the way in, we got peepers already. I was tagged three times. First of all, I was Scott, uh, Scott Taylor tagged me. We talked over landline and he said he was going to and then next video he did. I was also tagged by Jonah, 365 Outdoors. And last but not least, Corbett from the Warsatch Gear Review. He tagged me. The five things that are most important to me, the five things that are most essential to me, and the five things that I usually do not go to the woods without. That's kind of how I'm going to interpret it. And seeing how I got tagged three times, that gives me 15 items. <laughs> no, I don't have that many. But I am going to pull out a couple of things and show you. Uh, you don't always see them in camp. They're not always in camp, such as my axe. It stays in my car so that if I go down to the lake or here, down to the V farm, I've got it with me no matter what. The same with the bow saw. Generally, I have it in the trunk of the car, but here lately I've been leaving it over to the hideout just because of cutting firewood all the time. It's pretty handy. So let me undo a couple of things here and uh, show you what I carry. It goes to camp with me every time. Kind of first things first. I'm not a real bushcrafter. I can come out here and make do and cut down trees, make me a shelter, make me a tripod, whatever I need for around the campsite, but generally I don't do that. I'm coming over here most all the time. And I've got pretty much what I need and I carry pretty much what I need for that spot. And if I was to come up here and do an overnight, you know, I would have most everything with me still. And I see I've lost the guard off of it down in the bag somewhere. Just a slip over plastic guard that came with the axe. This is a trooper. Get up there where you can read it maybe. 28 inches overall. Two and a quarter pound head on it. And it's sharpened for splitting. It's, it's not a razor sharp axe. It does have a good edge on it. I wouldn't be carrying it without it. Comes in real handy. I don't like to use a hatchet. Uh, they just don't have enough weight. To carry through and to me you know that much more handle really doesn't make any difference to me because I want a two and a quarter pound head just gives me a little more leverage to swing with not as strong as I used to be this is always with me in the car and ready to come to camp at any time and yeah I got to put an overstrike guard on it I've been pretty good so far I suppose that would be my my number five item because it's not always with me but it's fairly handy when I need it. I'm gonna go right on into the second one that has been with me practically every camp I've been on for the last two years or a little more. You guys see it in every video. 
uh, not so much when I just come out and walk around setting the trail camera or something like that, which by the way I'm going to check on on the way out. This is the little camp shovel that I bought. To me it was the uh, most versatile little unit for the price. Now I didn't know if I was getting some little piece of junk, but actually it turned out not to be a piece of junk. Let me go with this. A decent little sheath with it. You, know, you can belt loop it. I usually keep this uh, belted on my backpack. Just a medium stone, nothing fancy. And as I told you guys one other time before, it does come with a hatchet. I'll show you that in just a minute. I use this shovel every time. I just, just every time. It's good for everything from tending the fire to digging cat holes. It does have just a little bit of an edge on it. I didn't try to grind it all the way up. Uh, we have other tools for doing that, like the hatchet and the axe. But I do keep a fairly sharp edge on this. Rabbit, wish I could. He's gone. I do keep a fairly sharp edge on this just for digging, cutting roots. Because uh, around here, as you see all behind me, all these little bitty trees produce a whole lot of little bitty roots. And some of the bigger trees, uh, their roots are not too far under the surface either. This was 15 bucks when I got it. I think I've seen them for 11 something, eBay. Uh, just under camping supplies, go to shovel. Nothing extra fancy, pretty good quality. As far as bending it, I have used it and used it fairly hard, and no, I have not bent this piece at all. Uh, little doohickey there it does work pretty good. Let me see if, uh, pulling stakes works real well for that. I know you guys didn't see that, but it does work good for that. I suppose you could probably open a bottle with it too. What really sold me on this thing was the fact that it does come apart. Doesn't make that much difference trying to stow it anywhere. The hatch and handle goes on here. Locks in. And I believe I told you guys before this weighs, this the, the total thing here only weighs 11 ounces. So with this hatchet head, you don't have much. It's a fairly good little striking hammer if you need to hammer a stake in the ground somewhere. As far as an edge, uh, it's got an edge on it that I put on there probably two years ago when I got it because I have not used this uh, I don't believe this this has ever struck a piece of wood. I just don't have any faith in it uh, It is good for, for uh, light splitting now if you got to do something like that you can use it for a wedge I know you're not supposed to do that yeah, We do it anyway But it is a hatchet it is a form of a hatchet. It's just not heavy enough. Same push the button down and unlock the inner piece. Now it's about 10 inches of grip. Well, excuse me, about 9 inches of grip. Locks in the handle the same way. And if you look at the true of the blade, it ain't true no more. <laughs> This one I haven't had the problem like some of the more expensive saws. I think they temper just a little too much maybe. Maybe it's just the steel that they use because this is probably not very good steel if I'm getting this whole apparatus for 15 bucks. I'll tell you what, it's cut a lot of firewood. And anything much bigger than your wrist or your ankle, I wouldn't attempt it just because you're going to run out of blade on your stroke and you'll wind up kinking it. Uh, I have kinked it several times. It cuts in both directions. And so far I have had no issues with that piece at all. It's, it's done really well. Almost a can't do without it can. So this stowed back in the handle. Lead locks back in. I'm going to have to get one of my other tools out to get this out. But I keep it stuck down in there pretty tight so that uh, 
it doesn't have a tendency to come out. I guess that would be a six inch blade, give or take. I'm not gonna do it, it locks in the handle in the other end in the same manner. Uh, not a bad little pig sticker if you needed one. There again, not nah, your top quality stuff, but I'm not afraid I'm gonna break it. Now it did come kind of sharp after gutting a few fish and dragging it in the ground a couple of times. Uh, I put an edge on it and haven't used it much since, if any of at all. But there again, you've got a blade with you. I'm not sure what this little hook's for here. Really, really don't know. But this one up here is an inset line cutter, twig cutter, whatever you'd care to use it for. And again, stows right back in the handle. No issues. Haven't had any trouble with it coming out. Practically every time you see this, it's going to look like this. And now you know what's inside. So, this one is essential to cam, without question. It's kind of hard to do this. You guys have already done it. I'm kind of low on the totem on this one, on this tag, but that's okay. I don't mind the tag at all, and for future references, for you guys that watch me out there, tag me anytime you like. See if I can do something about it. Everybody needs a good knife in the campsite. Now you guys pay attention, you don't see me wearing this around camp. Very seldom do I ever actually put it on my hip. Uh, it is generally stationary on my backpack and at night when I have my backpack close I leave it for easy access this is a newer buck 119 really good knife um, stainless you guys have seen them for years they've been putting them out for years and they're to me it's still an excellent knife you can do pretty much whatever you want to, and this one, we do not play with the blade on this one because this one will shave you, if I was inclined to. <laughs> it's kind of a Kydex lined um, canvas sheath, very well made, it travels well, it holds an edge, even after baton and wood with it. Where else would you be batoning out here in the woods? <laughs> okay, now I'm not even keeping up anymore. Since I got it out on the ground, this one I don't leave home without. This is everyday carry. This is the Gerber. I don't know that it has a particular name. Multiplier, maybe. It's all stainless. I got it for free several years ago because one of the locks, you know, if you guys got these, you know that's got the locking mechanism for your blades. This one over here didn't have a spring in it. As you can see now, it locks quite well. Spring out of an ink pen solved that problem. It is very sharp. That blade I just pulled out is my main use blade, and that one doesn't strip wire. It doesn't <laughs> strike on a ferrule rod. It doesn't do anything like that. It's strictly for cutting. Uh, the file screwdrivers are always handy to have with you. You never can never can fail with a good screwdriver. At least a usable screwdriver. Can't say that it's all that good. I guess about the last item I'm going to talk about would uh, come under the heading of fire. buddy Grizz in Detroit sent me this. Thank you, brother. Light my fire. I've been using it for a pretty good while. You can see I've been trying to turn it a little bit there to uh, not wear it completely out in one direction. It does throw an excellent spark. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a whistle also. I've had no issues with this at all. 
the only issues I generally have is what I'm using for tender, whether it's dry enough to even light or not. Um, you can go to the woods without it, just carry a lighter, which I've always got a lighter in my pocket. But I really do like having one or the other. One in one pocket and one in the other pocket. I just don't like to leave home without, you know, and, and you guys have all seen the, uh, you know, first my little Seeger Eat case. These here are just fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this style barrel rod at all. That one's grooved quite heavy because I use the teeth on the striker because it strikes a whole lot better than the solid edge does. And I haven't used a whole lot of magnesium. Now I've got another one in my other pack, a bit older. Uh, the magnesium bar is about half gone on it. I will say one thing. This is the one from Harbor Freight. The magnesium on it does scrape up and, and not all that bad. But the other one that I've got is a Cogman's. The magnesium on it's not a hardly as hard and it scrapes off a whole lot easier. You can get quite a bit bigger pile shortly with it than you can with this one. They both throw about the same spark. Uh, decent. Let me do that again. That's pretty cool. Can't complain about that little piece for, you know, three bucks. And this one's been with me for a while. It's lit quite a few fires. I will say up to this point, not as many as the light my fire. I always carry a couple little extra of the matches. This is also where I keep uh, dryer lint and uh, my Vaseline cotton balls. They're all in there. I won't go any further into the fire kit. You guys have already seen that. I've done a video on it somewhere else. I guess with the exception of my bow saw, which is not here, it's your typical um, Hmm. 18 inch? 16 inch. 16 inch. It's the one you've seen around with the lime green handle on it. It's pretty handy too. It cuts crooked. It's a $6 saw and it came with two blades. Both blades cut the same way. They both lead, lead to the left. So just bend your saw a little bit to the left and keep cutting is my theory on that one. I'm not too worried about it for six bucks. And it's done way more than six bucks worth of wood cutting, I can tell you that. I think that's just about going to cover my essential stuff, what I carry every time. Oh, wait a minute. I do have one more thing. I think this is pretty important. I remember where I put it. I it's in here somewhere. Uh, always want to have a night light with you. Some sort of seeing apparatus in the dark. I sit around in the dark a whole lot, just because I like to. Uh, so I don't use a whole lot of batteries. Like I said, I brought a couple of other things here. Uh, just because, for one reason, I carry them in this bag when I come out like this anyway. I suggest that nobody ever go anywhere without your med kit or some sort of little med kit uh, that you put together or store bought either one. They're, they're all good as long as they've got what you need in there. And uh, this one goes with me. It just goes pack to pack. I don't have multiple kits. Uh, I've got another little pack that's very small. It's just band-aids that generally fits in here also. Very important, folks. Don't leave home without this for sure. And you always got to have something to cook with. That's my 18 ounce Ozark Trails cup and my little uh, stove setup. If you don't have some way to uh, at least get water together, if you didn't carry a bottle with you, I, I obviously did today, but um, to me that's one of the handiest pieces of equipment in your, back, in your backpack. And it'll pretty much hold all you need to cook with. The little gas stoves fit in there quite well. A few napkins, some other, maybe your salt and pepper and stuff. Uh, the bottle themselves, I, I'm not for sure whether the Jet Boil, the small bottle from Jet Boil, will fit in here or not. 
I'm not, not sure. I don't use a jet boil, Jonah. Some people like them. I've just never had one. So for me to stick this in the fire most of the time or set it on top of the sterno, which we carry in there all the time. Excuse me, not sterno. It pretty much happens to be filled up with not water right now. But it works all the same. Boils water short. <laughs> Let me take a break from talking here for a minute. I'm going to load me a pipe and keep me a big drink of water. Just sit out here and kind of enjoy the uh, breeze coming through the trees. 72 degrees in February. Mm. Go figure. Thought I'd take advantage of this little sweet gum tree for a few minutes. A nice place to hang the pack. Oh yeah. You may see a uh, machete hanging there. That's another one of those deals you just couldn't pass up. Four bucks. It's nothing extra special, that's for sure. But it does chop down a little stuff. I've used it a few times. I don't do a whole lot of bushwhacking. Uh, if I come to clear a little campsite like here, there's a few small ones I'd take out here. And when I say small, two foot or less. I'm going to try to leave all the ones that are in good shape going. The cedar trees were here first. Then all these little rascals like the one I'm leaning up against, the sweet gums, tulip poplar yellow poplar in here too can't really tell much difference except in the leaf maybe I'll come back up here and do a do an overnight looks like a nice spot well I hope you uh, Hope you guys got something out of my little share. A few other things that I take all the time, you know. You guys do too. Just general essentials. Under the bushcrafting heading, you know, the, the axe, the hatchet, the saw. That's besides the knife blades that I carry. You know, that's all the carbon equipment I have. So when I do bushcraft, it's usually pretty simple bushcraft. Pretty sure I could whittle me a spoon. May have to do that. Gonna have to take those two cedars down over there. So I'll have a nice little stock of cedar. Maybe I can make me a fireboard out of it too. Just gotta find the proper drill. If anybody knows out there uh, which particular type wood makes a good drill for a bow drill, using a cedar block earthboard not sure of the terminology there I believe cedar is pretty good for for one of those I'm not for sure I believe there's you know one of those big woodpeckers I believe there's uh, some pine trees right back over here I'm going to kind of walk around that du that direction on the way out and see if uh, maybe you can find a little fatwood. Just not having much luck with the fatwood here. It's just not all that fat. It smells good. It's got a turpentine smell to it. Some of it a little sweeter than others. As you aficionados all know about the, the uh, all that fatwood stuff. I hope that wind's not coming down too hard on the camera. 
It's real high in the trees right now. Just got a nice little breeze. You can kind of see. 20 mile an hour gust today. Now we got four days of rain to look forward to now. Price you pay for 70 degrees in February. Kind of the more I look around here, if I needed any straight lumber to build anything, this would be one of the spots to come and get it, wouldn't it? I believe this is quite a bit uh, younger growth than down there around the, the hideout is. Full of little cedars, though. They're still in fair shape, I guess. You know, a lot of the limbs on the bottom are dead, but still got a whole lot of green up in the top. Kind of gives you a shot there of where the cedar thicket and this here young growth separates out in the woods. Had a whole bunch of dead fall down around here. Not back over there in the cedars though. We'll walk off that way one day. Just here before long. We'll go back to the hole in the ground. It should be a good day to be cutting some firewood, wouldn't it? Since that's going to rain for the next few days, it'd probably be nice to get some under the shelter down there. So I'd have some dry when I came over. Somehow or other, this just feels more right. That's a nice little walk up here. You said it's not too far back up there behind us to the hole. We'll make that on another day. It's supposed to get kind of cloudy this afternoon. It'll start raining again tomorrow. I think it's already started getting a little bit cloudy. Deer tracks everywhere. And I'm walking down a trail. One of Minty up here. It's a little bit harder to pick the hide out. Out of the woods now, isn't it? Blends in a little bit better without the uh, lean-to and TP up there. Yeah, the woodshed's a giveaway though, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know about you folks, but I think the uh, timbers that we had cut for the lean-to over there, hobo shack as I referred to it, I think they're going to serve a whole lot better purpose right here as a bench. I uh, need about four more runs to be through. Right now it's just held up with uh, half hitches. <laughs> I'm going to go through and retie everything and lash it all together when I get through. Just didn't bring enough paracord with me today. Well, folks, I have really enjoyed this afternoon. I hope I've done the tag well enough. That everybody kind of got what I was going for there. We were supposed to, in the beginning, I think, tag, tag five other people. And right now, at this point in time, I think the tag's gone around pretty good. And knocking my bench down. <laughs> Those are my leftovers. Those are going to be upright supports here in the middle. At least two of them. I'm not sure if I'll put the lean-to back up just yet. Kind of going to see. Most of the stuff that came off of it wasn't salvageable. So kind of got to start all over again. I think I'm just going to leave a frame this time. Just call it even with that. And I get ready to spend the night in it, throw a tarp over it and be done. It's kind of a nice little walk up there today. Nice little spot. Like I say, it's just a little bit further to that spot than I wanted to continuously carry something in when I had a spot like this right here wasn't any needing going any further for me. I 
I know you can hear them back up there in the background. Oh, they'll be singing all night long, probably. Until it starts raining, anyway. I think I'm going to mosey on back across town. Before traffic gets too bad, from probably 4 o'clock. Just almost feel too relaxed to get back out in traffic. Mmm, what a mess. Oh well, that's for me to deal with, and I'm glad you guys came along today. Hope you enjoyed the tag. I'm not going to tag anybody. I just feel like if you guys are watching this and you haven't been tagged, show us your stuff. You know, the cook sets too. I, I, I'd kind of personally kind of like to see what everybody cooks with and, and the kind of stuff they carry on a, every camp trip. Stuff that's essential to them. Kind of like to know what you guys think. Might make me change my mind. Some of my stuff might have made you change yours. I don't know. Thanks for coming, everybody. Till next time, just waiting for the next big adventure.